when you propose marriage to uh, your loved one, your fiance, and you do all the trouble like I did with my ex-wife and you use a, a special gemologist, you don't even get a setting, you get a loose stone and you get it all the cut, that the perfect cut that she likes, that style, whether it's a princess cut or or or, or whether it's an emerald cut or whether it's a, a pear shape cut, you know, and all the different, show, you know, the, uh, the marquee uh, cut and you get the perfect color, that white diamond, whether it's half a carat, one carat, three carat, four carat, and you present and ask her marriage. Do you think that she would cry from that sentiment if it didn't come in a little like ring box and you just gave her the ring? I don't think so. And that's what I want to talk about in today's edition of LarryTheWineGuy.net. Hi, I'm Larry Baker. I am a certified level two sommelier and with the Court of Master Sommeliers. And I live in South Florida and we're doing it live right here from the, uh, the studio I've been using, which is my apartment here in Sunrise, Florida. So, there are certain products out there that, of course, you know, if you're buying a KitchenAid mixer and they come in different colors and you might want to match that person's kitchen and you might want to, you know, put a special gift wrap on something and everything like that. I'm telling you, in fact, I just got off the phone with a master sommelier in the phone and telling me about a venison dinner and a risotto and all the Barolos and he said he couldn't give a rat you know what you know about what the label looked like there are people who buy wine that just because that's the name of their mother and it has that name in the wine or it has a little cat and they have a cat on the wine and uh or it comes in a fancy little curvy bottle or the box that it comes in you know has a fancy thing and i'm i'm telling you from the bottom of my heart that and from everything i know in this business when it comes to wine and spirits as a gift Okay, even for yourself, uh, if you're a real wine enthusiast like me, the last thing we care about, in fact, it works reverse. Instead of impressing and showing thought, it actually depresses when I'm looking at ads right now for brands of liquor in a Wine Spectator magazine that's sitting on my coffee table, and I can see brands that if anybody gave me one of those brands that are advertised in that magazine, I probably would re-gift it and just smile and say thank you. You know, like... I have some of my special memorabilia to demonstrate this. Uh, like this is somebody gave me this. I don't even know why I keep this. It's all rusty. It's a Moscow Mule Cup that I guess came with some box of vodka that was generic vodka. I don't even drink it. I think I gave away the vodka. I don't know why I don't give away this cup. I've never made them. I don't even drink Moscow Mules, but this is the kind of thing that this would attract somebody. Oh, look, it has a cup, you know, but uh, this is uh, like, uh, I think this was a, uh, what was this? Uh, Newcastle beer came with a Newcastle glass and somebody thought, I like that brown ale. I liked it when it was made in, in England, but now Heineken owns it and it's made in Holland. It's, it says it's on the box, it's, it's England's oldest brewery, but yet it's made in Amsterdam or Holland uh, by Newcastle, which is Heineken. So I don't know how it's still a brewery. If they still have an active brewery in England, I don't get that. But anyway, the glass would have made, if I like that beer, which is a generic beer, um, I, the glass would have made the difference whether I, the gift uh, or the impression that would have made. In fact, it would have depressed me if somebody gave me six pack of Newcastle. There's so many crap beers out there. This is the Schmaltz Brewing Company. The beers were horrible, but the glasses were cool. They make Hebrew uh, and it came in a gift set and I didn't like these beers or any of them. And, I, and it just, I, I guess they gave them to me because they, I'm Jewish and they thought it would be cute. You know, Schmaltz is the chicken fat that we cook, chop liver with and all that. And it's a Schmaltz Brewing Company. And I get the theme, he brew like a brewed beer, but this didn't mean anything. But let me, uh, I'm also tell you that I just had to get a, a customer recently where I work. And they called up on the phone. They called three different liquor stores and wine shops, or fine wine shops rather. Not, I hate the word liquor store. Fine wine shops. And they... They, they were looking for things that had a criteria for gifts that they give every year. They know that their customers that they're giving the gifts to, uh, they like Bordeaux. And they also know the brands and the certain chateaus that these people drink. And this person in the $20 price range was, he didn't, he had different criteria. He had Larry the Wine Guy criteria, which you should be taking notes from this gentleman named Ori. Shout out to Ori. Uh, I can't say his last name, it's so loud, uh, and I wouldn't want to announce it anyway, but he's a lovely Ukrainian gentleman, and a great guest who 
loved my service and recommendations, but his criteria was he did not want a, a he wanted a Bordeaux that came in a, a full wooden case seal, so not a carton that was like open or masking tape or anything like that. He wanted to give a full case of Bordeaux to each person and uh, in that $20 price range. And uh, number two, he had a classification that was very important or a qualification that was very important, a specification that the wine wouldn't be a Bordeaux, that they would know a chateau. So many little small chateaus on the right bank and left bank of Bordeaux in that Medoc area or in the right bank and uh, in just Bordeaux Superior region or in, uh, and, and this is what he was looking at or Montagne de Santa Million. And he wanted brands that he said that they wouldn't recognize because that would make it show that he put some thought into it. And that's where I'm kind of going with this. I have some of the memorabilia that I saved the bottles for because they really touched me because they were really different. And, uh, Gregory Harrington of Gramercy Cellars, uh, the youngest person to ever pass the uh, Master Sommelier exam, I think he was 24 and now become winemaker in Walla Walla. And the one wine that the new Florida distributor in, in uh, Florida doesn't bring in and most distributors don't bring in since they took it over is the best wine, in my opinion, the most unique wine that Gregory makes. And uh, bad decision, I think, on the distributor's part, but hey, I got a bottle of it, that's all I care about. It's the Inigo Montoya Tempranillo, the Princess Bride, the Spanish Fencer, see the Spanish theme, Tempranillo, a Spanish grape made in Walla Walla by the youngest uh, person to pass the Master Sommelier exam. I wouldn't care if this came in a paper bag or in a can. I, I saved the bottle because I want to remember how amazing this Tempranillo was from Washington State, Walla Walla, not from Spain. Um, I, uh, I love this Argyle Extended Tourage. Tourage, if you don't know, in a champagne or sparkling wine made in the method of champagne, is that period when they, the wine doesn't have any bubbles and they put it through the, the double fermentation by adding yeast and sugar into that, uh, the same bottle that you're drinking, and they put like a beer cap on the top of it. And it sits for usually one and a half, two years, sometimes three, sometimes five, you know, in champagne I've seen, but this one is for an extended period of time. This is Roland Souls and Argyle Winery in Willamette, damn it, in Willamette Valley, Oregon, using the same grapes that go into champagne, but made in the method of champagne in Oregon. And it's 10 years, extended tirage. So this was a vintage of 2002. I buy it every year directly from the winery because you can't find anybody that's selling this stuff. And I got to go over through their wine club and they don't make a lot of it. Uh, it's 65 bucks a bottle and it's well worth it. And I save every bottle because I want to remember each year that I drank this on New Year's Eve and how many years back I drank this. But for 10 years, it ages on that. It has the, it's better than any $400 bottle of champagne I ever had. And it's made right here in Oregon. 10 years, that real bread doughy taste, really, really fine bubble. Uh, I mean, it's like five, six, seven years longer than anybody, you know, with sparkling wine made in a method of champagne, that it sits there double fermenting, re-fermenting in the bottle and getting that on the lees on that yeast cell for all those years. Amazing. Um, the best gift that I ever got to really bring it home, the point was, and I'm talking the best holiday gift that I ever got as a wine person and spirits lover is the ugliest label I ever had. To tell you the truth, the product, the taste wasn't that good and it still brings tears to my eye every time I look, to the, I look at the bottle because look at this label, it's called Poetry in Port. Literally the best gift everybody got. This guy came in a shopping bag, like a public supermarket bag, and just threw the bottle at me and I cried. First of all, he's, he's just a customer, he's not a friend, he's not family. Second of all, Poetry in Port is not really a port wine, it's a fortified wine, but made in some really small town that I can't even pronounce, uh, Murinsboro, Tennessee, but his father and him do this and they private label it in their home. It's a tradition for many, many years. And he gives this out as a Christmas gift and or holiday gifts. And this port, it was very drinkable, but it had no packaging. You can see the label is really nothing. It's kind of, it's all like something you stick on, you know, that he did you suck them on himself, whatever. But him and his dad, this tradition for somebody to go through the trouble of thinking of somebody who's just a, a business relationship with a work. He's a customer. I'm, you know, just as a sommelier, you know, recommending wine to him. But he thought enough about me to bring me a bottle of his tradition of his own homemade port. Do you think that if this had like, a, I don't know, maybe one of these on top of it, that that would say, wow, now I really think it's a gift. No, 
or do you think he could have went out and bought a, a, just a, a real port from Portugal and said, here's a great port, right? I mean, here's a seventy hundred dollar bottle of vintage port. You know, it wouldn't have felt the same thing to me. I would have said, oh, it's that brand of port. It's Taylor Flaggate or great port producers, but it wouldn't have meant for me as much as him bringing me a bottle made in Tennessee. It was it just warmed my heart that somebody, and isn't that what gift giving's about or the season of giving? You know, we share gifts. We love this holiday time because we want to give the gift. And I promise you, I promise you that any kind of bells and whistles or any kind of fancy packaging or because the person's name is Bob and the winery has the word Bob in it is not going to impress, it's going to depress. If it's some ad that you see in a magazine or some wine you see in your supermarket or some spirit that you see in any package store or liquor store, it's probably, even if the person drinks that, is not going to have the same effect that that poetry in Port did or that person who's giving out those wooden cases of Bordeaux that nobody ever, here's a case of Bordeaux in a wooden case. I think we had a little crash on the set here, but nothing broke. That's good. And nothing's going to have as much impression. So for further information or other gift ideas that you can do, hit me up by joining my, following my blog and you get all that information how to contact me. I got lots of ideas if you want to listen to them. If not, you know, you can go out and just uh, do what you always do every year and buy something, you know, whatever. That's up to you. But I really think as a wine person, I'm telling you what warms my heart and it will warm any spirit drinker and, and wine drinker out there if you go with something that comes from the heart. Even if the quality is not up to the specifications, the, th the trouble that you put into it and that, that gift giving, they can tell that you really, really care about them and that's what it's all about. So remember, wine is not for snobs, either is spirits. It's for everyday people like you and me. And I promise you, it's not the packaging that matters when it comes to wine and spirit. It's what's inside the bottle that counts. Next week we talk about Thanksgiving wines. Talk to you soon.